Welcome to a lesson on how to find a second solution and the general solution to a linear second order homogeneous differential equation using the method of reduction of order. To begin, a differential equation must fit this form here if it's a linear second order homogeneous differential equation. And since p of x, q of x, and r of x, the coefficients here, are not going to be constants, we cannot use a characteristic equation in order to solve the differential equation. One limitation to the method of reduction of order is that we must be given one solution to the differential equation. So if we're not given one solution, we can't use this method. And this technique is a method for reducing a second order differential equation to a linear first order differential equation to help solve the original differential equation. The way this works is that we're going to assume that the second solution will be in the form of y sub two of x is equal to u of x, some function of x, times y1 of x, where y1 of x is the given solution. Now I do want to mention before we begin, there is a shortcut formula that we can use to find y sub two of x given here if the differential equation is in this form. We'll take a look at the shortcut method in the next lesson. So looking at our first example, notice how the given differential equation does fit the form and therefore it is a linear second order homogeneous differential equation and that we're also given one solution, y1 of x. So again, for the reduction of order method, we start by assuming that the second solution, which we'll call y, or y of x, is equal to some function u of x times y1 of x, which in this case would be x squared. Let's go ahead and write this as just y equals u times x squared. And because we're assuming this is a solution to the differential equation, we'll now find y prime and y double prime, and then perform substitution into the differential equation. So if y is equal to u times x squared, y prime will require the product rule. So we'd have u times the derivative of x squared, which would be two x, so two x u, plus the second function x squared times u prime. And now we'll find y double prime, which again is going to require the product rule. So for this first term, we'll have two x times u prime plus u times the derivative of two x, which would be two. So we have two u plus x squared times u double prime plus u prime times the derivative of x squared, that'd be two x, so two x u prime. Notice how we do have two like terms here and here. So y double prime is equal to four x u prime plus two u plus x squared u double prime. So now using y, y prime, and y double prime, we'll perform substitution into the given differential equation. So we'd have x squared times y double prime, that would be four x u prime plus two u plus x squared u double prime minus three x times y prime, y prime is two x u plus x squared u prime and then plus four times y, four times, let's write this as x squared u equals zero. Now we'll clear the parentheses by distributing and combine like terms. So we'll distribute here and here. So we'll have four x cubed u prime plus two x squared u and then plus x of the fourth u double prime and then minus six x squared u minus three x cubed u prime plus four x squared u equals zero. Now let's first focus on the u terms. Here we have two x squared u minus six x squared u, that's negative four x squared u, and then plus four x squared u, which is equal to zero. So all of the u terms simplify out 
And this is key for making the reduction of order method work. So when applying this method, all the u terms should simplify to zero. So now looking at the u double prime terms, we have x to the fourth, u double prime. Then looking at the u prime terms, we have four x cubed u prime minus three x cubed u prime. So that would just be plus x cubed u prime equals zero. So because we only have u double prime and u prime terms, we're now going to perform a substitution to reduce the order of this differential equation to a linear first order differential equation. For example, if we let w equal u prime and w prime equal u double prime, we can write the differential equation as x to the fourth w prime plus x cubed w equals zero. And now we can solve this differential equation for w using separation of variables, and then integrate w to find u. Once we find u, remember our second solution is u times x squared. Let's begin by replacing w prime with dw dx. So we'll have x to the fourth dw dx. Let's move this term to the other side so we'd have equals negative x cubed w, which means x to the fourth dw equals negative x to the third w dx. And now we'll divide both sides by w and also divide both sides by x to the fourth. So if we divide both sides by w, we'd have one divided by w dw. And now if we divide both sides by x to the fourth, notice how we'd have negative one divided by x dx. Now we'll integrate both sides. This would give us natural log w equals negative natural log x plus a constant c. And now we'll exponentiate both sides of the equation, meaning e raised to the power of natural log w must equal e raised to the power of negative natural log x plus c. Notice on the left side we just have w, and then on the right side we can write this as e to the natural log moving this negative one to the exponent of x, we'd have natural log x to the negative one times e to the c. Well, e to the c is just a constant, and e raised to the power of natural log x to the negative one is just x to the negative one. So we have w equals, let's call it c sub two times x to the negative one, or c sub two divided by x. And now that we have w, which is really equal to u prime, we can integrate this to find u. Again, remember we let w equal u prime, so this is really just u prime, and our goal is to find y equals u times x squared. So let's go ahead and replace w with u prime, or du dx, equals c sub two divided by x. which means differential u is equal to c sub two divided by x dx. Integrate both sides. And we have u of x equals, this would be c sub two natural log x plus another constant which we'll call c sub one. Which means y of x is equal to u which is c sub two natural log x plus c sub one times x squared. So y of x is equal to c sub two x squared natural log x plus c sub one x squared. So notice how when we found y, this is actually the general solution because notice how we have the sum of multiples of two linear independent functions. So this would be the general solution Notice how the general solution also contains the given solution, y one of x equals x squared, when c sub one equals one. So to give a second solution, we can let c sub two be any constant. Let's let c sub two equal one, and therefore y sub two of x, our second solution, could be x squared natural log x.
that's going to do it for this example. Remember in the next lesson we'll talk about how we can use a shortcut formula to find y of x and y sub 2 of x. I hope this was helpful.